What's up guys, my name is Enchrisma and you are welcome to Reveal It. Today we are going to be talking about one of the most epic fights in the history of the Bible. Firstly, I want to read a very important verse to you. Uh, 1 Samuel chapter 17 verse 40 And he took his staff in his hand and chose five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in the shepherd's bag which he had even in the script and his sling was in his hand and he drew near unto the philistine why did david choose five smooth stones to fight goliath five is often considered as the number of grace but that's not our focus for today but i want you to know that when the bible talks about a specific number you need to pay attention because there is always a catch when i had the idea of making this video i was a little bit curious so i decided to do some research on the topic and what i found was way too removed from what i had previously imagined uh like something like this uh the results what is this by the way, if you are new to this channel, God bless you as you subscribe. As you might have noticed, Goliath was the giant with whom David fought. And trust me, when I talk about giants, I'm not just talking about uh, your next door tall neighbors. These were actually giants, just like the one you saw in the movie called Jack the Giant Slayer. These giants are referred to as Nephilims in the Bible. We are talking about a hybrid of women and angels, ugly and mutated beings with six fingers and six toes on each leg and each hand, capable of devouring and paralyzing you with just a single look literally second samuel chapter 21 verse 20 later on there was another battle at gath where there was a very tall man with six fingers on each hand and six toes on each foot 24 in numbers who had also been fathered by giants when moses sent spies to jericho they came back with a rather negative report they said indeed the land is flowing with milk and honey just as god had said but they were giants in the land when we looked at the giants we were like grasshoppers in front of them and when they looked at us we were like grasshoppers in front of them so no matter how we look or how they looked we were like grasshoppers why did david choose five smooth stones the reason why David chose five smooth stones was because he had been told just before the fight that Goliath was not the only giant. Goliath had four other giant brothers. So in total, there were five giants. So basically, David wasn't choosing five stones because he was trying to multiply his chances. So he chose the five stones because he was told that Goliath had four brothers, so in total there were five of them. So he had planned to use one stone for each of the giants, but unfortunately he didn't get the opportunity to use all the five stones because immediately Goliath got defeated, the other giants had to flee. So how do I know this? Good question, because uh, we are going to look at some verses right now. 2 Samuel chapter 21, verse 22. These four giants who had been fathered by a giant in God were killed at the hands of David and his servants. So you can read the whole chapter to better understand the topic. What we consider to be one of the most epic battles ever fought, or will I say the most unevenly yoked battle ever fought, actually ended before it even started. What a shame, because we did not get the opportunity to experience the usual 12 rounds. What is the lesson behind this story? The anointing is the lesson behind this story. Look at this. David was conscious of the anointing that he had received. And because of that anointing, he knew very well that he could never fail or he could never miss a single shot. If David could do all of these things in the Old Testament, which the Bible actually considers to be shadows, then we are expected to do even better. Because the Bible says the New Testament is founded on better promises. And the New Testament is the substance. So we have the real thing. And because we have the real thing, we are supposed to be doing great things with the anointing. 
many years ago, I visited one of my friends and he was bedridden because he was sick. When I saw him on the bed, I was like, why are you sick? He was surprised and asked me, what kind of question are you asking? I was like, you have the anointing, you shouldn't be sick. And he felt offended. And I felt offended too, because he is not supposed to be sick. Now, listen carefully. If you have the anointing in your life, you need to be very aggressive. If not, it won't work. Consider what the Lord Jesus Christ said. He said, the kingdom of God suffered violence and the violence taken by force. That means you have to be aggressive. Many people have this mentality of thinking that Christians are very soft. But I disprove you. Christians are very tough. You can have the anointing and still die like a natural man. The Bible talks about the fact that Elisha died of a fever. But many years ago, after he was buried, his bones, when he came in contact with a dead man, came back to life. So he had the anointing, but he died of a fever. The fact that you have the anointing is not a guarantee that it's going to work automatically. You have to be aggressive. If you have received the Holy Spirit, then you have received the anointing. Learn how to make the anointing available through prayers and studying the Word of God. Uh, talking about making the anointing available through prayer, I actually made uh, some videos on YouTube titled 50 Codes and Secrets of Prayer. So this video is going to teach you how to make the anointing available in prayer. Make sure you watch it because I left the link on the description below. That's all for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed today's content. Please kindly like and subscribe if you are new to this channel. God bless you.